when you have a channel that has been around for, what, seven plus years now, and a good amount of content is Pokemon, eventually you're gonna start talking about competitive. And how important the competitive Pokemon scene is, and how necessary it is to make the best Pokemon, the gotta min-max a whole lot of things, and get the perfect moves, the perfect Pokemon, and the Pokemon themselves have to be perfect. Whatever. But, the implications of doing this though, the implications, meaning that sometimes you just have to breed Pokemon to get the right egg moves, right? That's, that's the whole thing with Pokemon and competitive stuff and making a good Pokemon team. With or without competitive, like me, I don't do competitive that much. But I do like to make Pokemon teams because, hey, I do. Eventually, you want to start breeding stuff for moves. However, have you once thought of what are you breeding exactly? Like, your egg moves right. However, have you noticed, like, what parents are you are you putting together? Well, I got out of, like, watching a bunch of videos about weird, like, Pokemon breeding partners. Mostly from our Guardian. And I kind of want to do one myself. With the catch is that one of the each breeding pair that I mentioned here in this video has to be from 7 Gen. Has to be a power from Alola. Okay. So I'm, I took and researched from all of the egg groups. Well, except for, you know, the, the ones that can't breed. And Ditto, of course. And I compiled together a bunch of really hilarious and ridiculous Pokemon breeding partners related to Pokemon from 7th Gen. So, in somewhat of a crazy order, I'm going to give you my, my ideas for crazy Pokemon breeding partners from 7th Gen. Okay, so let's begin. Let's start with a human-like egg group. Now, what kind of crazy... Uh, breeding partners from 7th Gen that you can get out of it. Zero. Want to know why? Because no Pokemon from Rowlet to Magearna are human-like egg group. Yes, I checked. There's none. Moving on. Mineral egg group. Okay. Similarly to human-like egg group, there's no one that can breed uh, on that egg group of 7th Gen. Even there are 7 Gen Pokemon that are in the middle egg group, the catch is that all of them are genderless. However, the crazy thing is that the ones that do though can learn attract. So the first, so the first like kind of only uh, mineral egg group egg, uh, egg group breeding partner is Delmines and or Minior and Cryogonal. They can't breed with each other, yet they can learn attract. And yet, every time they use attract, they fail because they don't work on genderless Pokemon. That is that just that is funny. Also, what I find it kind of weird is why is Delmas a mineral egg group? Because isn't the the Pokemon out of the you know the seaweed anchor combo is the seaweed? So would it make sense for Delmas to be in the grass egg group? Since yeah, okay, the the Pokemon itself is the seaweed. As mentioned in the Pokedex, the the anchor part is just decoration for the seaweed. So it would doesn't make any sense for the the seaweed to be in the same egg group as stuff like Geodude. But then again, the seaweed doesn't have any eyes or anything, so I don't know if anyone in the grass egg group will want to breed with regular looking seaweed. I don't know. And Minior, I guess it kind of makes sense for it to be unbreedable. Uh, with other gendered Pokemon, Regenderless, because it's just a thing in space. But then again, other like space Pokemon like uh, BEM has genders. So, I don't know what to say. It, they're, just, they're just little star bits, really. And Cryogonal's really weird. Why does it have a track? I don't know. Next group to mention is the Fairy Egg Group. Now, the thing with the Fairy Egg Group is I only have one, uh, one pairing, which, which I don't think it's weird per se, it's just, if you really think about it, it's kind of weird. Ribombi and Florgus. Now, aren't bees supposed to be like pollinators to certain flowers, right? I don't think it'll be, I, I just think it'll be weird for instead of uh, the bee pollinating plants, 
where the bee is the one who's pollinating the plant, if you know what I mean. I just kind of, kind of it's a, kind of a weird relationship, if you ask me. I mean, Florgus is this um, curvy bouquet fairy girl, I think. And I guess I could say same thing for his evolutionary line, too. But the bee, like Ribambi, is supposed to be helping, helping out with production of plants, not itself, with the plant. <laughs> Just find it kind of weird. Next egg group, Water 3. Now, again, like with Fairy, I only have one one pairing that's worth noting. You know how kind of derpy looking Crabominable is? I mean, it's just so derpy. I mean, Crabbala looks cool. Okay, I don't mind it. But its evolution just looks kind of derpy. The the breeding partner I fought for Crabominable, this derpy little thing, Lord Helix himself. I don't I don't know why it shows Omastar. It's just look it just we think about it with the whole Lord Helix uh thing. And to and to bring it with this derpy little derp. I just think that just that's just, that's, that's, that's so weird. Next one is Bug. So Bug Egg Group. Now both of these pairings that I thought of have something to do with Wimpod. So think Wimpod don't think it's the kind of Pokemon that would stick stick around and you know, because it's kind of scared of just about everything. Let's take, for example, Wimpod. And something will make sense, it'll be scared of Vespiquen. Vespiquen looks like the kind of Pokemon that would uh, be demanding, be the kind of the kind of Pokemon that would order around everything, including Wimpod. And the Wimpod would just uh, be scared because his girlfriend is bossy, so trying to get away from it, but it just can't because Queen Bee and summons a lot of uh, other other bees like Combi and maybe even Cutifly, who knows? But to 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 force a Wimpod into into her service, I just I just I just think it would be a weird sitcom. <laughs> okay, so next breeding partner again with Wimpod. Let's go with Ninjask. Now, why Ninjask? Ninjas is fast! Like, have you ever, you know, like, try to flinch someone? We you try to put your fist or hand or whatever so dang close to someone's eye, you just immediately flinch, even though you try not to? Ninjas is super fast! It's like, Ninjas would just go zoom around, and then a wimp would not know what the heck is going on, I need to get out of here, and then it just wouldn't work very well. It just wouldn't work very well. It's just... Just too scared of Ninja's speed. And also get speed boost, so it gets faster over time. That's nuts. Next egg group, Water 2. Now, this time we actually have some different partners for this. Now, let's start with Wishy Washy Solo Form. So this little tiny sardine. You know what it can breed with? Waylord! <laughs> you would think that freaking uh Hot Skidian Waylord action is nuts. You would think that Hot C Dot and Waylord action is nuts. You would think that Hot Diglett and Waylord action is weird. Now, just so you know, whales are mammals. Okay, you are mammals, right? So it makes sense to agree with, let's say, Diglett more than C Dot. But Wishy Washy is super tiny. Like, Wishy Washy by itself is like super tiny. I, I, I don't think that Wishy Wishy Washy and Waylord would be compatible with each other that much because isn't Wishy Washy I think smaller than Diglett or just as tall as Diglett? Except it's swimming. Dude, Waylord can accidentally eat Wishy Washy. But what gets more hilarious is what if it goes to a school form against Waylord? That the it's a, it's a bunch like a bunch of tiny fish. Just acts as that really scary, you know, giant fish that made a smaller fish against Waylord. Bring each other. I don't know how 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 it would work. <laughs> it's just it's just nuts. It just doesn't just weird. Next bring partner, War Two. Well, only have two bring partners. Bruxish and Malamar. Now, Bruxish has weird fish with psychic powers, so to say. Has um. 
or uh, its psychic powers involve stunning people, because making paralyzed or whatever. Malamar has hypnotic abilities. Who would win though? Who like who would win? The crazy evil Bruxish stunning abilities and then just chomping down with their powerful teeth, or Malam or Malamar's hypnotic abilities. This would be in I, 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 that would be insane. That would be insane. Like who would who who would win? If Malamar wins and hypnotic abilities be uh, the Bruxish Bruxish, the Malamar command the Bruxish to do essentially whatever. And if the Bruxish Bruxish wins. Then Malamar will be scared of the Bruxish, and then just do whatever Brux Bruxish wants. That would be in, uh, an, an insane uh, battle of of control, really. I, I just find that just find that weird. Next up, the Grass Egg Group, and again, like with the Bug Egg Group, both involve one Pokemon, Sarina. So let's say you have Sarina, right? This this um. I call my my favorite Pokemon. So my favorite uh, seven gen Pokemon, and always female. And you would think you wanted to give her a, a, a nice uh, partner for her. Let's give her another grass waifu material, Rose Raid. <laughs> that would be interesting. Male Rose Raid already looks like a girl, and Sarina. Heck. Male Rose Lake probably looks, looks like a weird, like, um, thief or rogue with, you know how in the anime, uh, there was like, a, a Rose Lake that has, like, some sort of leaves covering up its face? So maybe more like the, the dashing rogue to save the princess. That would be awesome. Oh, and not be awesome, it's Sarina and Shiftry. <laughs> Shiftry is, like, the kind of Pokemon that, that, that would, that would, um... I guess mess things up is like the rogue, but also kind of mischievous. The kind of Pokemon that would um, betray you. The kind of Pokemon that would do some nasty stuff. And you got Sarina around being the the regal princess type, and uh, it would be kind of you know not very not I would say not very cool, just not very. Worthy of let's say a Disney a Disney animated series, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Next up, the Flying Egg Group. Now, both of them involve Oricorio to some extent, but I'll give you one. This first one is pure Seven Chan. You know Decidueye, right? How the kind of Pokemon is looks like the kind of guy who would, you know, be concentrating on. Its target, even though it like it picks up, it picks up uh, an arrow and fires it like in tenth of a second. But you still need some concentration to you know to get to get it going. Otherwise, you'd miss and you probably lose your target, right? It would not make sense for this uh, concentrated the, the sniper to be focused on if his girlfriend is a freaking cheerleader. <laughs> what? I, I just feel like it's kind of weird opposites like you wouldn't expect the lone ranger like decidui to be pumped up cheerleader style by oricorio pom-pom style it, it, it just doesn't feel right you know what i'm saying it doesn't feel right and also get oricorio for some reason sigilith is in is in the flying egg group yeah I mean, it's flying type yeah whatever but it just doesn't Feel like a Pokemon, just feel like a weird object. M Magic freaking Oricore Battle style with Sigilip just doesn't connect well. I mean, uh, Pau style probably makes sense because they're both the same type, and Pau style the kind, I don't know, might be the kind of Pokemon that would, like, uh, would be the kind of Pokemon to go along with Sigilip and Sensu, Sensu style. Kind of, again, kind of looks like the kind of Pokemon that would. Uh, hang, hang around with this weird, mysterious, floating object. Heck, even uh, Oracle Pom Pom style. Will probably, probably the kind of Pokemon would be interested in some sort of weird thing like Sigilith, but Oracle Body style, I, I, just, I just feel like it doesn't connect very well. It's just how how would it work? I don't know. Next up, our lar our largest egg group, 
the field egg group, and like with, you know, it being the largest egg group, I do have more entries in the field egg group than the others, with five. So let's just let's just start with let's start with this one. Now, Incineroar, this beast of a beast, you know, the 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 kind the, 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 the kind of manly Pokemon that would you know would show off the kind of Pokemon that would beat his enemies down to the ground and then and then do this sort of pose for the crowd to, to cheer on him. I think it would be weird if his girlfriend's a freaking Diggersby. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Diggersby the kind of kind of girlfriend or boyfriend in Cinnamon's female. That I don't think the the kind of girlfriend that Cinnamon would be like, um Yeah, that's my I think that's my girlfriend. <laughs> then I'm sorry, but Digger's be the kind, the kind of Pokemon that Incineroar would be kind of embarrassed to show off to his parents. <laughs> Just saying. On the opposite side of the spectrum, Primarina, Wapiny. Like, complete opposite of that is like, if the Primarina was a dude, then Primarina would definitely show off that, that Wapiny girlfriend all day, all night long. And if the Wapiny was a dude, then, hey, he just scored himself a mermaid girlfriend. Nice. But again, they're both female-looking Pokemon. They both look like women. And one of them has to be a dude, but you just have to figure out which is which. Because they're both feminine-looking. Next up, it's kind of an oddball one. And speaking of balls, past Simeon and his weird rugby coconut melon ball. Now, imagine a group of Passamian playing their equivalent of rugby or, or soccer or football in, in, uh, in most countries. Uh, you know, just having a cool time, just, um, you know, having some fun. And one, and let's say one Passamian, he has like a really dirty melon ball, right? It would be kind of annoying for his girlfriend, Mincino, to start running around, cleaning the ball, and just like, okay, you're good to go. And start cleaning all of the, the, the past saving. It's like, please stop. I'm busy. You're embarrassing me in front of my friends. And they're like, no, you have to be staying clean. <laughs> it just would it just would, it just would be weird. It would be weird. It would be hilarious. Imagine the other past Simeon would be like, look at this guy. Look at this guy's girl. Look at this guy. This is a little embarrassing girlfriend. <laughs> it just it would be funny. I'm just saying it would be hilarious. Just imagine a group of Simeon playing ball, and his, his Machino girlfriend starts cleaning all, so they're cleaning everything at the moment. The the Machino boyfriend Passimian, or the other around, I think I think Passimian can be female too, right? Uh, go, it's, it's unclean. Now imagine if it is that if, is, can Passimian be female? I think so. I don't know. That that would be kind of awkward then. <laughs> Next up. So, everyone knows, everyone here knows, everyone knows Pokemon, knows that how big of a deal Gumshoes is. That Gumshoes is the chosen one. Gumshoes will make everything correct, make everything great. Make the greatest thing ever, and he will succeed, he will build a wall, and how, <laughs> have the, all the money. Clearly, the ideal girlfriend is one that could transform into anything he wants, Zorark. So uh, I'm giving I'm giving you that right now. Zorark, being the mystique of Pokemon, can make itself look like anything else. Clearly, Gumshoes is the one deserving of any girlfriend he wants, so he can have all the girlfriends. And since he's in a field egg group. All of the girlfriends. Now imagine if Zora turns into a whale lord. That would be hilarious. <laughs> and lastly, beware the really cute but dangerous Pokemon that can, according to the Pokemon, can kill someone just by hugging. It would be weird to try to see a, a beware hug to death a Diglett. Now, now again with Take like Wailord action, but I think Beware would be worse than Wailord. Not just because of the size difference, 
But beware, we the kind of Pokemon that would rather just punch a Diglett down by accident or hug a Diglett to death if it could even squeeze a Diglett between its arms because its arms look this is bear like, so I think it would be hard to grab. And Diglett's really tiny. So it might actually pluck Diglett off the ground and then get to get to see, see first dibs on what Diglett looks like on the, on the ground. Hmm? Next egg group is the amorphous egg group. Okay, okay. First of all, I know my favorite Pokemon's in the amorphous egg group. I know how it's awkward that Gardevoir can breed with something like Muck, can breed with something like Weezing, can breed with something like that. But whatever, whatever, just whatever. However, Gardevoir's not in any of this. So we're wondering if Gardevoir, your favorite Pokemon, the most feminine looking Pokemon ever, it's not in the crazy breeding partners idea you have, then what is? Two of them involve Palo Sand. Now, this one I like to effectively call glass shipping. Okay, this is official glass shipping. Palo Sand, or it's pre evolution, and Macargo, or it's pre evolution. Sand plus something really, really hot equals glass. It would be kind of weird for to see Palo Sand being you know, a sand castle with, you know, Riddle likes to get hit with water so that it can get sturdier. Complete opposite of that, this little magma snail comes in, turns the entire thing to glass, and just unable to do what it really is built for. The Palisand screwed figuratively and literally by this Micargo. Because it turns to the glass and just. Oh my goodness. Or, or, another option Stunfisk. Stunfisk, the kind of Pokemon that would just lay low under the sand, you know, trying to shock whatever it is that comes in its way. Now imagine that sand was well, a Palisand. Where Palisand comes in, rug on the sand. Oh, it's a trap! But it's also a ground type. Crud! <laughs> it would be really, really weird for, let's say, a Palisand to be on top, to be on top of a a, a, stun, a borrowing Stunfisk, and the Palisand eats a, a to try to eat, eat Pokemon. Let's, let's say, I don't know. Let's think of a Pokemon that Palisand would be kind of eat. Let's say a Rattata. Okay, for example, just give it an example. Okay, a Rattata. Oh, it's Sandcastle. I'm gonna get in there. Not only does it get shocked by the Stun fist that's living inside it, but also would be beaten alive. And this would be eaten by the Palisand and the Stun fist together. Unless unless the Palisand eats Stun fist too, then in that case, well, there goes Stun fist. It's just just double teaming against against his prey. And this is what I'm saying here. Okay, last up. So you all know how Mimikyu, the kind of Pokemon that doesn't want to get, you know, touch sunlight because apparently it's like very weak to sunlight, so it covers itself in disguise. So, what would happen if it had to breed with a light source? Litwick! Or is evolution? It will do. How how would it happen since it the Manica doesn't like doesn't like the light and yet it it's breeding with a light source? I mean granted it's like a purple flame and purple flame's kind of, you know, sucking in the souls of whatever. But Mimikyu is also a ghost type, so I don't know how that would work. Or maybe Mimikyu is actually immune to the liquids like source and just doesn't like the sun as is. And just sunlight. Like any other light source is okay, like a light bulb's okay. Also, Mimikyu will have to expose itself somehow to to the litwick. I wonder who what what gets um, affected more. Maybe Mimikyu due to soul stealing uh, flame that Litwick has, or Litwick. For I haven't seen the growth that has Mimikyu underneath its disguise. Maybe Litwick's immune to it. I don't know. And Litwick's immune to to Mimikyu's like effect of revealing it, revealing itself. Then good for Mimikyu. But still, they breathe it with light source. That'd be weird. Especially with the light source of fire that might actually burn its disguise. Then that'll be a big problem for Mimikyu. Okay, so next up, Dragon Egg Group. Now, let's just say a certain Pokemon that 
I've mentioned before my favorite Pokemon list is in the Dragon Egg group. However, I'm going to talk to about this specific Pokemon last, even though I wrote it down first. Because this Pokemon is also in the next egg group I'm going to mention. And it's crazier than what I'm going to mention here. So, um, let's do a seemingly simple uh, pairing. Jagmo o and Bangon. Now, you've been wondering, well, that's not really crazy at all. They're both first uh, first stage two legendaries. I, I just think I just think of a really awesome story with that, with with, the, with this pairing. Let's say the Jagmo and Bagon. I don't care which is female, which is male, whatever, it doesn't matter. They're both childhood friends, and the Bagon wants to learn how to fly, while the Jagmo want, wants to be stronger, and it all leads to Bagon keep falling down cliffs on falling down cliffs or whatever, and maybe the Jagmo, um, something maybe even. Does some little exercises. He even like tries to pick up the Bagon once on mid like mid dropping down a huge cliff. Both evolve. The Bagon's not shell gone, and it's just there really. But just just a giant shell. And Jangmo evolves into Hakamo O, and maybe due to shell gone's higher defense, it could be used as like a punching bag, a little, a little punching bag for the ha Hakamo O to start beating up, and maybe even. Have the Hakamo O just throw the, the throw the shell gun around, see if it can learn how to fly, and then eventually both evolve and both like realize their dreams where the the, the Bagon now Salamence now knows how to fly and the Jangmo now is well, the Kamo O now it's a lot fit, lot stronger and can uh, hurt stuff a lot more. It even it even has a, has some scales it can use for a, a sound fighting source. So yeah, that's pretty much the idea I have for for this. Next up is kind of a pair of very similar pairings. You know what I mean? Both involve Turtonator, and Turtonator is the kind of Pokemon that I still don't know how to spell very well. I don't know. Well, uh, Turtonator. The whole point about this this weird pairing is, uh, is that weird hole it has in this chest shell part over there. I don't know. I don't even know where it is because the visual image doesn't have it. Whatever. Point is. Uh, Torian has a weird weak point in, its, in the center. Maybe it'll be small enough to fit freaking Magikarp in it. I don't know. Imagine, like, Torian and Magikarp. How would even Magikarp even, even work? I don't know. Uh, Magikarp probably would be better with a fish, but not a fire tortoise thing that has a landmine for a shell. I, I don't know. And also... You know, that's a whole. I think it'll also be fit a freaking the the horsey's mouth inside, cause it, so I think I think remember right the the mouth oh, that mouth the mouth of horsey's kind of like should be around the same height, not smaller than that hole that Tordia has, considering how big it is. So I don't think it would be very uncomfortable for the Tortinator for it for its mouth to be for for its, not its mouth for its little chest hole to be. Completely, I ins. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying weird stuff right now. Imagine the freaking horsey's mouth being inside of the tornado hole thing. Maybe it's the most correct breeding method ever. I don't know. And now let's let let's move on to that one. Let's move to my. Uh, let's just say that Pokemon that I really love so much, but it's not my favorite. Salazel. Oh boy. What kind of crazy breeding combinations can we do with you? Okay, so from the Dragon Egg group, Salazel can breed with Gudra. Now, okay, what about it? Think about it. Gudra made all this sticky stuff, sticky white stuff, and it goes all over Salazel. Because Spooch! I think I don't need to explain any further than that. Now, Salazel isn't just in the Dragon Egg group. She's also in the Monster Egg group. Now, clearly, Salazel being the amazing Pokemon that she is, wouldn't do so well if, you know, a huge fan of Salazel, who's like a big, kind of nerdy, fat person, kind of lazy, you would think that... 
a person like that would never do well against someone so amazingly hot as Salazar. But here's the thing. Salazar doesn't mind. Now, we're wondering, what do you mean Salazar doesn't mind big, lazy, fat people? She can be with Snorlax. Yeah. Since Snorlax is in the Monster Egg group and Sal's in there too, that means that Sal can, in fact, be with a big, fat, lazy dude. Okay, I think I think my I think my chances of uh, bringing with her is wait, no, I shouldn't say that. But something's kind of creepy though. What Sal can also bring because it's in the Monster Egg group. Do you know who else is in the Monster Egg group? That you got someone as curvy as Salazar. She can breed with Cubone. Okay, okay. Here's a representation of why this is weird. So hey, like, just gonna throw this out there. You're really cute. Uh, well, you know, my mom always said I was a cute kid. <laughs> oh, a mama's boy, huh? I'll be your mommy. Ah! Yeah. But, not all, but, uh, okay, so that's awkward. But, you know who else is in the Monster Egg group? Drampa! Now, okay, but Drampa's also in the Dragon Egg group. We're thinking that Dragon... Drampa would be better than the Dragon Egg group. But here's the thing, but you know who else is in the Monster Egg group? Freaking Nidoran female! And, imagine this! You got a, a, a little girl, and ha having to breed with this old dude. Gee, that doesn't sound weird at all, right? You're getting old dude, little girl? Whatever, nope, no, nothing, 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 nothing wrong here. Definitely nothing wrong here. But, there is something weirder than what I just mentioned here. Let's go, let's, let's go to Water 1, my, the final egg we're going to mention here. Now, you might notice it's coming, so brace yourself if you don't. Now, the first two I'm going to mention is kind of no big deal. Okay, it's kind of no big deal, but the last one I mentioned is crazy. Like, crazy in the style zone, what I just mentioned. Let's start with the least crazy. Primarina Ludicolo. I think, I think it would make sense. I think it would make sense that you got uh, a Pokemon that's known for singing and a Pokemon that's known for dancing. I mean, you know, you know how awesome Ludicolo's dances are, right? So, I think this makes sense. But it's not really crazy. It's just, I think that it just makes a lot of sense. And I think it would fit well. Unless, you know, Primarina has this weird spirit bomb Z move, and I don't know. It just feels, feels kind of odd, odd. But isn't Primarina also have, like, explosive bubbles? At the, the color? I don't even know. It has, like, leaves. I don't know. It, it just, it makes, just, for me, it just makes a lot of sense, and I, th I think it, it's the only one that makes a lot of sense and should be mentioned here. Now, next one. You'd think that Puke and Muku would be the kind of Pokemon that probably doesn't care whether or not it breathes or not. But the kind of other Pokemon that doesn't mind, doesn't care if it breathes or not? Stunfisk. So, imagine this. Stunfisk is just chilling around in its spot, you know, waiting for its prey to come out, trying to do some crazy. And it turns out that it's in, it's right on top of a Puke and Muku spot. And... Sunfist, oh hell, heck yeah, it's a water type. I can I can easily uh, handle the Pukumuku, but the thing is that Pukumuku is really annoying. It just keeps staying there and stays there. Like the Pukumuku is the Pokemon that doesn't care if it's hit or not. It would annoy the Stunfisk, and like okay, get out of here. I'm I, I need the spot, but Pukumuku doesn't care. Pukumuku is there and it's his spot. I, I don't care what you say, his spot. Or her spot, whatever. And stuff is kind of annoyed, like, ugh. Come on, get out of here! I need a spot! But Pikachu doesn't care. Pikachu wants a spot. And stuff is, ugh. Fine, get out of here! Fish. Crazy, whatever the heck you are. You just go die or something. But Pikachu is still in the spot. Wonder you know why? Because Togas entries and even the game mentioned that Pikachu Muku stays in the spot even when it dies. It, it lives in that spot, it dies in that spot. Like, it doesn't, doesn't care if it dies, doesn't care if it starves to death, it's there. Then Sunface, like, just looking around, I don't know how it would, but, like, what is with that? And you want me to, you want me to breed with that? No? For Sunface, for all his derpiness, for all his, like, flatness, would be more annoyed than anything. 
if Pukumu comes into a where Pukumu comes in, declares his spot, and Sunfist will just be annoyed. I don't know. But, but okay, here comes the final pairing, the the one the the feature presentation of this. You think Salzel is kind of questionable, but here comes the thing that's even more crazy. So. Everyone knows how terrible a breeding pair Zangoose and Survivor are, right? For how they're rivals, and they would rather kill each other than mate with each other. I do not think. I think this is worse. This is this is one hundred percent worse than it. You so rivalry is one thing, but and even implied, I guess, predatorial things is whatever. Now imagine this. Explicit predatorial relationship. Toxapex Corsola. Toxapex eats Corsola. And the game relishes in that fact that Toxapex eats Corsola and leaves around Corsola bits around when it walks. Yeah, I do not think that that breeding the two would produce a good idea. Toxapex would destroy the Corsola before it tries to mate with it. I don't care, but Toxic wouldn't care about his trainer. It wants food, and it wants it now. And, it, and hey, my food is right there, right in front of me. Why the heck not? So, that's, that's a terrible idea. So if you're a Pokemon trainer, and Bree Toxic plays Corsola, for whatever reason, don't expect that Corsola to come back, though. Yeah. So that's all for my crazy breeding ideas for Pokemon uh, Sun and Moon. So if you have any crazier ideas for what kind of crazy po what kind of crazy Pokemon Seven Gen Pokemon would breed with, put it in the comments, whatever. And I can't believe I'm saying this for the first time, but hey, if you care about my content, like, comment, subscribe, whatever. Anyway, see you guys later for something else. <laughs>